Now, you might be wondering why I've come here to talk about OpenStack, but uh, it's going to be about the idea of running uh, Cilium somewhere else than in Kubernetes, because we all know this picture, right? We all love it, uh, but the life is not always like that. So uh, standard uh, Cilium usage is in, in Kubernetes, right? But uh, our story is uh, that we don't have just Kubernetes clusters. We have uh, a few different clusters. I'll tell you in a, in a minute. So uh, the problem is running Cilium outside of Kubernetes. The features or the possibilities you have in the open source version is Cilium external workload. What that allows you is to import. Uh, it can be a VM. It can be a bare metal server. You can import it into your running Kubernetes cluster. You will need to just get the host name, get the IP addresses. You can add labels to it. And you, you'll just put that into a YAML, uh, into the Kubernetes object, put that into your cluster, and the cluster will uh, know the identity of that external workload. So there will be Cilium agent running, running on, the, on the VM. For example, it will allocate an identity to, to the whole VM. And uh, will that, that identity will be shared in the in the cluster. Uh, what you will see is that you just need to use uh, at CD. So you need connection to the at CD. You don't. Uh, you can't actually use the Kubernetes with the external workload. So our story begins when uh, our manager came to us one day and said, "Guys, this is all great. We can use Cilium in in Kubernetes, but our users." also have OpenStack. Uh, so this is an OpenStack logo. Uh, and they have their databases in, in OpenStack. They can't just migrate, migrate them, and they can't just run them in Kubernetes, because they are MySQL databases, Postgres, and they are used to run them in OpenStack. So uh, can we somehow make Cilium work in OpenStack world as well? And that was a bit of a challenge. We started slowly. Uh, we discussed it with the community, with the Cilium maintainers, so thanks a lot, guys. Uh, we were able to run Cilium agents on each OpenStack node. Uh, the node is actually the, the machine which hosts the VM, so there can be uh, 10 VMs, for example, on, on, a, on a single node, just like in Kubernetes, Kubernetes world. So then, uh, when you run Cilium agents on them, they, uh, they just need, uh, again, connection to the, to the at CD. Uh, what you can do then uh, regarding the policy, so uh, there also was a security team that came to us and said, guys, is it possible to, to secure somehow the, the, the workloads, the VMs? And we are, okay, we can, uh, we can try to find it. And there was this uh, Cilium policy import command, which you can run from, the, from inside the Cilium container. So you can import uh, a JSON file which will have uh, the what should be allowed, what should be blocked. So just the definition of the, of, the, of the policy. But the problem is you need to go one by one uh, and do that on every node. I mean, you can do some scripting around that. You can perhaps have a cron job that does that for you. But what about updates and stuff like that? So we came up with the idea of what if we put Kubernetes next to the OpenStack? So what if we somehow configure these agents to connect to a Kubernetes, but apply everything on the VMs themselves? So in OpenStack, you just like in Kubernetes, you have worker nodes, you have master nodes. So on master nodes, there, there is the control plane, right? We are used to, uh, to run add CDs on them. So it's easy, right? We just spawn uh, the Kubernetes on those nodes, so it can be, uh, it turned out to be a K3S with just the control plane, no, no, uh, no worker nodes, so no workloads, but just the master nodes so that we have the Kubernetes control plane. We can apply something in there, right? So we can actually use the kubectl uh, and apply the standard policies, what you would apply to your standard Kubernetes cluster. You can apply them to these for example, K3S and Cilium agents are configured to access uh, and to, to, to pull everything from those Kubernetes uh, cluster nodes. 
So then uh, they just apply the policies, can be the same ones uh, as, in, as in Kubernetes case. But it's not it, right? You, if you have just, uh, just a single cluster, it's, it's not enough. Uh, our users, they, they want cluster mesh. They want uh, to share the identities across, uh, across all of it. Which means uh, we somehow need to uh, expose those etcds to the, to the other clusters. And we, we've heard how the, uh, how the cluster mesh works. So uh, Selim agents will pull or will synchronize all the identities, the IP addresses, from the remote etcds. And we'll update their IP caches and the identity maps. And then the communication can, can happen, right? So if, if I... Uh, connect one, one uh, server from, from a different cluster, I can see its IP, I know what it is, I know the labels. So, turned out this is actually possible. Uh, but I have only briefly uh, said what it was high level overview. So now if we take a closer look how, how it works in OpenStack, uh, there is this is a single node, right? So uh, there is a node. There is a VM which is running on the on the node. What had to happen was uh, we had to create a tool. We call it a uh, Cilium OpenStack plugin, which is uh, similar to what uh, what uh, Cilium Docker plugin is. It's which is in the Cilium repo. You can take a look at it. So we've created this. Uh, what it does is it. It needs a source of the, of the information, right? So in case of OpenStack, it's, it's libraries. It's, it's what's spawning the VM. So, so OpenStack control plane will, will uh, tell libvirt, hey, spawn me a VM, and it will do that. And what libvirt uh, does, what, what allows you to do, is uh, you can hook into libvirt. You can see the events that are happening there. OK, VM is about to be spawned. VM is, is about to be deleted, and we can we can uh, work with these events. So we're uh, watching these events and taking the information from them and just transferring them into something that Cilium uh, needs, needs to know. So we are using an uh, API to tell Cilium agent, hey, uh, this is a new VM. It has these labels. Uh, it has this IP address and uh, just create the, all the BPF programs and attach it, please, to my uh, tab interface, which is uh, what's in, in the OpenStack world. Uh, and if you want to use uh, host firewall, you, you can use that. It will just attach, just like in Kubernetes, uh, to your public interface, ETH0 in this case. And then uh, we have BGP, so there is no... Uh, it's, it's no different compared to, to the Kubernetes. We use uh, BERT in this case. So, which means there can be a few different problems uh, if you're running something that is not uh, standard. So I've, I've said that uh, we're using APIs. What Cilium uh, does, what allows you to do, is to use the low-level APIs. The one we, we use only is the endpoint one. So what you can do is, if you have something that's running on the, on the node, where the Cilium agent is running, you can just tell via the Unix socket, hey, uh, create me an endpoint. If labels change, patch the endpoint, delete, whatever. So this, this way, you can tell it if you have this information. So again, you just need an IP address, you need labels, you need uh, an interface name, and you need MAC address and the uh, data path configuration. In our case, we don't uh, use any IPAM related to Cilium. We just use the OpenStack one. So we, we use the external IPAM true. We needed to uh, let the ARP packets to go through so, so that the ARP resolution protocol works. Uh, and we also uh, needed to tell Cilium to install the IP route so that the traffic can actually reach uh, the VMs. So then we just create it with the endpoint endpoint create command. So this way, uh, we have Cilium running on the, on the node, and we have an endpoint, uh, a Cilium one. What you can notice is that uh, usually you would see here, okay, so it should be on this side. 
Usually you would see here K8S because Cilium, you are used to run Cilium in Kubernetes, right? And by default, Cilium will uh, prepend uh, Kubernetes label source to your Cilium endpoint. What we had to do was patch Cilium and we've created a new label source called OpenStack. So we were prepending an OpenStack prefix here, which is important to us so that our users can distinguish between if they are applying or allowing access from OpenStack or from Kubernetes. So this way they can, they can do it. So uh, again, that was a, a short intro to OpenStack. But now, if you actually want to test things out, uh, what you can, for example, our uh, common use case is we have a client or API in, in Kubernetes and we have a database in OpenStack, so in, in a VM. So usually if you have something like uh, default deny policies applied, you would expect that traffic is blocked, which in this case it is. But you know the, you know the labels which you want to uh, allow. So you just create a network policy, right? So usually uh, you do not have to specify the, uh, the prefix here, so the label source. In this case, we want to specify because we are explicitly saying, okay, allow me access to the OpenStack world. So we create seal network policy on egress to endpoints with labels, yeah, cluster, namespace, uh, the, the, the app, and we prefix it with the OpenStack. And voila, uh, things starts to work. So uh, this way you can allow access to, to uh, between these two worlds. But this was only a smart, uh, small part of our puzzle because our manager came to us again and said, guys, this is amazing, but our users, uh, they use something else, something that has been here for a long time. Uh, could you somehow figure out a way how to put this into the picture? And if you've been paying attention today, you, you have seen this picture. Does anybody know what it is? Yeah, it's Calico, exactly. So uh, our story is that we are still running Calico uh, in Kubernetes, also in OpenStack. And we are trying to figure out a way how to, how to put this into the picture, how, how to somehow connect Calico, which is like an outside world, you know, if you communicate from, from this cluster, from, from a pod, and towards your Cilium enabled uh, clusters, either Kubernetes or OpenStack, doesn't matter. This uh, will be just like in any other uh, outside world application. So it won't be, Cilium knows nothing about that IP address from, from Calico. So what we managed to do was create yet another tool. Uh, we call it Calico Cilium Bridge. And what it does is it will take workload endpoints, which is like Cilium endpoints in, in Calico world. So it's watching the workload endpoints in the Calico at CD. And it uh, transfers them, converts them into something that Cilium understands. So you need uh, at CD per every Calico cluster. And this tool can like, migrate everything that's in the in the Calico etcd into your uh, Cilium etcd, which you've just spawned, for example. Uh, and then it, it, will, it can just watch the events again. It, it just uh, watches, it, it uses the Cilium uh, library, the, the etcd one, to, to do that. So it will watch the workload endpoints with the prefix slash Calico. Uh, thanks to the uh, Cilium library, it will allocate an identity. So you need to tell it which cluster ID should be used. We've heard it today that you need for cluster mesh to work properly, you need cluster ID per every cluster. So for, for this to work, you need to tell it, okay, this is the cluster ID that this Calico cluster will use. It will allocate the identity for every workload endpoint and uh, save that into, uh, into the etcd. And then that, that's the first part, that's the identity, and then you need the IP address and the connection with the identity. So it will also save the IP address 
as the IP identity pair into the into the uh, at CD. So this way, uh, in the end, you have in the at CD you have the identity by by value and by the number in, in the in the at CD in the in the target one, and you have the IP address with the connection to the identity. So these informations are needed for the cluster mesh cluster mesh to work properly. So now uh, we've successfully managed to create cluster mesh across all these different environments. Uh, the problem was our users, right? We need to somehow uh, teach them how to, how to use all, all this functionality because they are not used to create network policies or, or silly network policies. Now they have, their op they have an option to, to create that in Kubernetes, which is native, they can use Hubble, which will help them. They can use the Cilium Network Policy Editor. But if you're combining all these worlds, uh, they also need to understand where are you applying this. So with Calico in the picture, uh, what you can do is just like in OpenStack, we've added yet another label source, Calico, which allows you to just specify that anywhere you want. So if in case you have you, you are slowly just migrating from the, from the uh, Calico clusters and we are trying to convince them, guys, with this, it, it's easier, right? You can just small, uh, in a small, small portions, just one by one, one component by one, convert them to, to the Cilium uh, Kubernetes. So if they have client in one, uh, in Calico cluster, they have uh, the API in the, in the new Cilium Kubernetes cluster, and they have the database in OpenStack. With this, they can just allow uh, and block access from wherever they want, and it just works. It just works. But the problem is uh, they need to understand where is the policy actually applied, and if it works everywhere, uh, they, they are used to. Uh, they are used to use. So, in uh, 1.15 uh, pre one. Uh, this works, so you have a uh, service of type noteboard, right? So policies are applied there, the ones I just shown. Uh, in case of service of type load balancer uh, in, in DSR mode, you actually see the original client source IP and it can be applied. So the policies can be applied also in this case if the traffic reaches the node, uh, for example, that is hosting the, the, the backends. But if we have ingress in the picture, the problem is it's a proxy, right? So usually it terminates connections, uh, uh, HTTPS connections. So if you use ingress, uh, usually what you see on the backend is uh, the source IP of the proxy, not of the original client that initiated the connection, but you see the proxy. So what you, the only thing you can, you can do is to allow, allow access from the proxy, but you cannot, uh, you cannot tell it, uh, allow only this specific client, you, everything will be allowed to access the ingress. You can use, the, um, I mean, maybe in a, in a cloud world, I don't have those experiences, you can tell it, okay, uh, allow only, only this subnet perhaps. But then uh, last week came the 1.15 pre-2, and uh, I wanna give shout out to, to Jarno, which was the contribu contributor to it. Uh, there is a, possibility to specify CNPs targeting the ingress itself. So now with uh, 1.15 pre-2, you can tell, allow only this specific client to access my ingress and you are good to go. So with, with that, the mission is accomplished and hopefully our users will be, uh, it will be easier for them to migrate to, to Cilium. So, if this is interesting to you in any way, if you think you, would, you could use that, uh, please reach out to me. Uh, we, have, uh, we have yet uh, to open source both tools. We have not done that because we are just uh, wondering if it makes sense to you. So with that, thank you so much. Do we have any questions? So you're uh, 
your Calico plugin and your OpenStack plugins, how do they reconcile state if they get out of sync? How do they reconcile state if what? Sorry? If they get out of sync. So let's say like the, your, your OpenStack cluster, if, if an event is missed by the plugin. Um, if it's missed? Yeah. Yeah, there's a, yeah, just like you said, there's a reconcile which uh, periodically uh, synchronizes the state if it did all it should. So uh, the plugin will, will uh, get the current state from the libvirt and it will just try to send that to, to Silim agent to somehow synchronize if, if it missed something or not, yeah. It's not perfect, but uh, yeah, it works. <laughs> Um, I was wondering uh, what, uh, I guess, lower level of networking model you're using with OpenStack? Was it uh, using OVS? Uh, no, sorry, uh, I forgot to mention it. Uh, it, 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 was, it has been based on Calico the whole time, so there is a BGP and uh, L3 networking, so no OpenV switch, uh, unfortunately. So okay. um, Maybe it could be a start. Um, the wish. other thing is, uh, how, how would you handle IP collisions between like private networks within OpenStack and also inside the Kubernetes networks? Or did you restrict the IP schemes? Yes, have? we have a specific subnets for, for OpenStack and different ones. So they, they are unique. If, if we want cluster mesh to work correctly, it has to be unique, right? So we are connecting all of them and yeah, have separate subnets for Uh, just one question about the networking uh, model. Are you using uh, just native routing mode? Yes, here? exactly. And so, so no tunnels or anything? Nope. nope. Okay. 